Showtime. Taking down the other podcasts one by one. Ooh, all these that clip is why people make fun of you. With Carl. This is all just for the radio. And, and why Mike? We want business to take care of. Ooh, all these we are the number one podcast on the internet today. W-A-T-S. Welcome to yet another episode of WATS. The show thousands of people come to to learn the age-old question, what's the deal with social media? If you can find a show that knows more about social media, I'll donate all Super Chat money to a non-existent person going through chemo. I'm your host, Carl Hamburger. With me, as always, is Mike Geary, a.k.a. Blind Mike. What's up, Mike? What's up, everybody? I'm the only person not going to DabbleCon this weekend. This is all I have, so let's make it a good one. Wait a second, you, but you're in Boston. It's easy to get to DabbleCon from Boston. I've heard it's a quick drive over. Yeah, uh, you could have gotten a ride with Hannah. What's your problem? <laughs> I was going to pick me up on the way. Some people are saying that on this show, WATS, I won't read Super Chats. Those people are dumber than a Tom Myers punchline. I will read every Super Chat that comes in, and please keep them coming throughout the show because... We will incorporate them into the program. Am I right, Mike? Yes, I have cancer, so you should donate. (laughs) All right, I was going to save that to the end, but I guess we can just do that right away then. (laughs) Mike has eye cancer, all right? That's that's why he can't see. So if you guys could help us out. I really am very brave when you think about it. I haven't said it until now. There is a treatment for eye cancer, but it costs $32,874. Yeah, I'm the only so blind guy we... Mr. Beast didn't help this week, apparently. <laughs> what an asshole that Mr. Beast. He's just <laughs> in it for himself, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> All right. I want to start off on TikTok. And we have actually some uh, interesting new stingers for the oh show. Goodness. I know. But Very not for exciting. TikTok. I like, I like our TikTok singer. Who are these TikTokers? And uh, let me start off right away by saying, Yay, Super Chats. <laughs> Adam Thoreau coming in with $9.99, and he says that that is for Mike's cancer. Thank you, Thank Adam, you Adam Thoreau. I appreciate it. Every dollar helps. <laughs> We do appreciate that. All right. I feel like this is becoming more of a jingles show that we that we use social media to get to the jingles. Oh, I, I hope so. That was my goal all along. <laughs> you know, I don't even like social media. I just like jingles <laughs> and radio stuff. You know that. All right. So I want to introduce you to Rachel or Keat is her nickname. Yes. And uh, this one came in as a suggestion from Doug from the jingles department. It helps the show in so many ways it turns out that rachel now rachel's a 17 year old girl um she's extremely attractive and she also has tourette syndrome which is what her entire TikTok. in other words folks carl is developing a type this is two weeks in a row now (laughs) you started the show with this perverts (laughs) (laughs) well hold on hear me out before everyone starts judging me all right let's let's watch her and see what's up Hello, I'm Rachel Orki and I have Tourette Syndrome. In this, in this video, I'm going to be talking about how you should behave around someone who has tics. If you are around someone um, who is actively ticking, fuck you, fuck your mom, I love you. Um, the main rule is to typically avoid reacting. All right, so Mike, are you starting to see what I'm talking about now? So, but now I'm wondering, around. is this a thing? these people are doing like our young girls like hey i could get a lot of followers if i pretend yeah. i have tourettes all right that's so, what i'm starting to wonder now because they have the same ticks good question all right we're gonna get into that let me finish this video and then we'll get right into that mm, because reacting can actually make the ticks worse and we don't want that i can't speak for everyone on this one but a lot of people ask um if they can laugh at my ticks and 
My response is usually, yeah, you can laugh at them if you're laughing with me and not at me because there's a big difference there. <laughs> Having this condition can make us feel you very can't insecure do that. and vulnerable. Don't set me so up like that. Please <laughs> just treat us with respect. No! By the way, I am always laughing with you, all right? Lest anyone think that I am laughing at them, never once have I laughed at someone. I'm always laughing with them. It's, you cannot say you can, you know, don't laugh at me, laugh with me, and then make a ridiculous noise involuntarily and not expect us to laugh at you. <laughs> yeah, You're I know. leaving us no choice. Yay, super chats. BCT with 20 bucks, 19 for Mike, $1 for the Hamburglar. Thank you. That's that to accounting. Up. That's yeah, that's fucked up. Sounds like uh the Beatles tax man. <laughs> One for you, nineteen for me. I see how this is. All right. So obviously last week we talked about Balin Dupree. Yes. And um my wife was not happy when she listened to that episode, how I declared my love for Balin Dupree. But now, now Carl's like the guy from you. He now he forgets about Balin and he's on to the next girl, you know? Correct. Yes. Now, so this girl, Rachel has been compared to Balin. Okay. And Balin is a pretty big influencer on TikTok. So she's getting accused of copying her because this is a thing that people are saying, like, oh, you're just pretending to have Tourette's because it's popular. First thing so, as a Balin fan, as a Balin, uh, you know, day one supporter. That's the first thing I thought. Correct. Yeah. So let's let's see how she responds to uh, to that. Hi, I'm Rachel Orkey and I have Tourette's syndrome. This person says, you're copying Balin fake AF. Sorry, but karma is a LOL, you're a joke. This is Balin. Um, as you see, we follow each other. <laughs> Allow me to educate you. With a simple oh Google search, you will find that complex vocal tics. <laughs> By the way, allow me to educate you is the cuntiest thing you could possibly say to someone, right? <laughs> Especially when it's said by someone who's fucking whistling and zinging and zinging. <laughs> <laughs> I like Take that me seriously. I like that her proof that their friends is that they're following each other. Is that where we've gotten to now, Mike? Like, obviously, we're, we're besties. Uh, we're following Dave, each other. If Illinois follows me on Twitter, we are pretty close. <laughs> yeah. Complex vocal tics involve repeating others' words. This is called echolalia. It is not uncommon for people with Tourette's to pick up tics from each other. I hate how this always happens, where I, yeah, mom, get um, accused <laughs> as a smaller creator that You're I laughing with her, right? bigger creator's <laughs> tics. I do have some recognizable tics of Balin's, like the you're done one. Um, That's not you're possible, done. right? But I typically don't post They can't just here. from birth Ooh, be programmed to say, I don't hey, want you to get accused of exactly this. Thank you for listening. Hope you well, I think what she was saying, Mike, is that she picks up her ticks from other people's ticks. So no, she how sees how much fun <laughs> she sees how much fun Balin's having, saying, "You're done. Put the ranch down." And she's like, "I gotta get it on this. This looks like a blast." This was the like the original idea for the internet was like one day girls with Tourette's will be able to connect with each other <laughs> and they'll make the same zany noises. <laughs> Now, I didn't invent the internet, Al Gore did, but I'm pretty sure you are correct about that. That was the original plan. I will say to the people, like, yeah, I get why it sounds like she's faking or whatever, but to the people that are accusing her of faking and not Balin, as if we are able to decide, like, clearly her tics are real. And yeah, whoever was not, first. Yeah, right, exactly. You've gone too far down the Tourette's rabbit hole. So Joe Dicker with twenty dollars Canadian says debuting soon the world famous ticking John Melendez show he might as well get on this bandwagon. Uh, you're done. Uh, put the ranch <laughs> down. <laughs> It'd be amazing. <laughs> I love it. Oh, you know what? I don't normally do this, but I got to go to voicemails early on this show to address this. Oh, okay. Put the ranch down, Carl. You fucking cunt. Just so we're clear, I don't have Tourette's. I really think you're a fucking cunt. Okay. Well, I'm glad you were clear about that, sir. This, I think, more addresses what we've been talking about. So let's right. go to this voicemail right away. Yo, fuck you, Carl. What's up, Mike? So I'm not going to say that TikTok girl with Tourette's is entirely faking it, but this is a known trend on social media where uh, younger teen girls, you know, will pick this up as a form of, you know, having a disability and getting attention, all that shit and mimic it for a while. And I've seen this, my younger sister in high school, you know, a few months after getting a phone, unrestricted access to the internet, 
she has she has Tourette's all of a sudden. And the thing about this is though, my parents took her to an actual doctor, and the doctor said, "Yeah, we are, we're getting a lot of these cases recently, and uh, if she doesn't, you know, stop it in about five six months, uh, then something's wrong. But if she does, then don't worry about it." And sure enough, a month later, she forgets about it. Yeah. But yeah, she was doing all the. Uh, you're done. You're done. And the what? And the all that annoying bullshit. All right. This is WADS in the morning. I got to say, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. If it gets you attention on top of it. We've come you know, a long not? way as a country where now having Tourette's is cool. Like People want to have Tourette's. Isn't that so bizarre? Because I've been talking about that with autism and everyone wants to be on the spectrum and they're all bragging about it and air fiving about how autistic they are. Why, why is that? We thrive on uh, having something to overcome and sympathy and things like that. Like there's a, there's a subreddit called fake disorder cringe where usually they hide people's identity on there. So it's hard to find the right accounts and everything, but they talk a, a lot about people with Tourette's people with tics people with uh, another disorder that we'll talk about later in the show it is very popular to pretend you have something that people will sympathize with. Yeah. We've looked at that right before on the show. We should go back to it. Yeah. That's a fun one. Cause sure. Mike gets a little bit annoyed with people who pretend to have disorders when Mike's yeah. like, yeah, but I can't legally see. So can it's I Mike complain? Stick. I pretend to be blind. Yeah. I, I started. Mike, Mike's like, Mike's like, is it cool if I complained for a second or now you guys are busy? <laughs> okay. never mind. It's fine. You guys keep complaining over there. That's the funny thing is like, I always heard like, stop your fucking whining. <laughs> and I'm like, I have, a, I have right. a real one. Come on. Right. All right. So now this is a weird question. Cause as I mentioned, she's 17 years old, which we learned last week is legal in most States. So I want to yeah, point Carl, that out. Carl and uh fucking what's his name? Wings of redemption are suddenly lining up a lot. on this program. <laughs> so I mean, how we, old is 12 really? <laughs> we, so we learned that. And she gets a weird question here that she's going to address. I promise you, I did not ask this question. Okay. Hey guys, it's Rachel or Keith, and I have Tourette syndrome. And um, this person asked, does it mess the ticks? Do the ticks mess with consent? A lot of people like to comment things like this and make jokes about it. I think this was a genuine question, though. Did you pick up on what she just said? No. She was talking about consent. <laughs> how, how does having a tick... Like, oh, I, I thought she was saying no because that was her tick. You know, she also said, put the ranch down. So I didn't know. So she's going to address this now, Mike. I think oh, this is education. That's very interesting. I hadn't thought of that. <laughs> well, you're not a perv, apparently. So that's good. I, I'm proud you're not of a rapist. Rapist. In my mind. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, and they think that they can get away with certain things, but I would like to inform you that you cannot. No. I am perfectly capable of articulating when I do or do not consent to something. Let's make up a hypothetical situation. So some, someone says to me, Hey, Keith, you want pizza? I, no. I'm going to say no because I don't like pizza. So no, I do not want pizza. I wasn't offering you pizza, but okay, let's keep going <laughs> on this hypothetical. So let's say that I happen to tick the word yes right after that sentence. Guess what I can do? Sorry, when I said yes, that was a tick. I really don't want pizza. It is oh. that simple. That is very clear communication. Well, I've already started raping you. What do you want from me? (laughs) Where am I going to put all this ranch then? I'm trying to put it down on your face. What's the problem over here? Make up your mind. (laughs) All right. Now she's going to educate us. A lot of these TikTokers, the younger TikTokers, I've noticed the the teenagers or the early 20-somethings, they feel like they have to educate everyone else on their world for some reason. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she's going to educate us on the difference between just having a tick and having Tourette's. Oh, excellent. Both are hilarious, <laughs> but, but they're not the same thing. Well, what's apparently. the difference? <laughs> yeah, let's find out. Hello, it's Rachel or Keith, and I have Tourette's syndrome, and this person wants to know the difference between a tick disorder and Tourette's syndrome. This is a great question, as there are many different types of tick disorders, one of them. <clears throat> Fuck off. Hey, I want to know the difference between uh, ticks and Tourette's. Can you wear a, uh, a low-cut top when you answer this, please? Thank you. I appreciate it. Being Tourette's syndrome. Um, and while I cannot tell you about all of them, I absolutely can tell you how <clears throat> Tourette's syndrome is classified. Tourette- <clears throat> Bam! Tourette's syndrome is characterized by having <clears throat> multiple of both motor and vocal ticks. 
you must oh, wow you must also have the symptoms for at least a year before getting officially diagnosed with Tourette's. Ow! But yeah, you can actually have tics and not have Tourette's syndrome. And it's actually incredibly common to have a tic disorder. Thank you for the question. Hello, it's Rachel Orkey, and I have to- Did you learn anything from that? It'd be great if she was just like, uh, well, mm, people with Tourette's mm, would, would make it through this sentence. <laughs> people with tics wouldn't. <laughs> or vice versa. All right, so now let's find out what happens when there's a, a tick party going on. Good God. This sounds like something I want to get invited to. We're too connected as a society. Let's let's see what how this works. Hey guys, it's Rachel Orkey, penis, and I have Tourette syndrome. And this person basically asks, um, "Have I ever been in a room with like other people?" Okay, you know, who I'm sorry. Or... <laughs> I just have to say this. Yeah. If she's faking, she's yeah. very good at it. Oh, she's phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> Because I don't know if she would like, <laughs> to commit to just throwing penis out like that. It's Mike, very good. Exactly. Because I don't have Tourette's. Go fuck your mom! And it would be very obvious. Penis! It would be very obvious exactly. if I was pretending to have Tourette's. Point Mike's a jerk! Everyone oh. would know exactly that I was faking it. She says that it. before the show a lot, too. <laughs> um, have I ever been in a room with like other people who have tics or Tourette's syndrome? I like her top! The answer is yes. Um, a few people in my family have tick disorders, but they're not very severe. And I've had two friends, one who had a tick disorder and another who has Tourette syndrome. Um, and it, it, it can be very difficult. Sometimes we have to actually take time apart from each other because we trigger each other too much. But despite that, it is doable. And um, these people who I've met that also have some sort of tick disorder are like so close to me and so I talk to them very often so we make it work if you're curious yes we do get takes from each other and um it's a very interesting experience it's starting to sound like they're, they're talking about the, the bug <laughs> right yeah exactly we get, we get Lyme disease. yeah yeah I, yeah I caught ticks from her <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what cures this ailment like maybe a donkey punch maybe I should start asking her questions <laughs> about ways possible cures that we could test <laughs> out club feet fall on this spectrum you know? maybe i can join these parties yeah good point people Imagine ask me all the time hey asshole <laughs> what's wrong with your feet Imagine. <laughs> thanks a, for the question imagine a group of these fuckers just ticking and beeping and bopping all oh, over the place i would not leave that party <laughs> i i am there you for the post duration up in the corner with a drink yep. and enjoy yourself <laughs> with my phone out Oh, no, I'm still texting. Still texting people with the flash on. Yeah, no, I'm laughing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more video on here, and I can't remember if I grabbed it because of what she's wearing or what she says, so I'm just going to pop it up real quick. Oh, yeah, no, it's definitely what she's wearing. Hello, I'm Rachel Key, and I have Tourette syndrome. And this person asked, when you tick, do you say the words that you know or you don't know? Ticking words that I've never heard or seen before is like thinking of new colors. What kind of fucking question is that? Do you tick words you don't know? <laughs> How would you even do? I don't so, even understand that. He, uh, people ask me that, like, if totally blind people can see in their dreams, and I'm like, that'd be pretty fucking amazing. <laughs> 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 if they just imagined what the world w looks like. All right. Well, I don't have to watch any more of that. We see her. We see her top. Yeah. Well done. Tune in next week where Carl just watches blacked.com. It's going to <laughs> gonna be a fun one. All right, Mike, let's switch gears to someone you found, Madison Russo. Yes. Madison Russo is in a lot of trouble right yeah, now. Yeah, so she is, uh, she well, is before guilty you say of that. something. Yeah, before What's you that? say that, let's, let's start watching this video. Oh, okay, that works. Right. And, and then we can get into it. Let's yeah, let's sense. feel bad for her. Oh, you know I what? Mean, I'm just... <laughs> Never mind. I forgot the person who posted this put out the video. This is what a fake cancer looks like. <laughs> All right. Never a mind. A lot of the originals aren't left. <laughs> All right. So so this woman's 19 I mean, years just... old, and she decided to fake having cancer. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. It's not good. It's real. Um, it stays like these that are hard. And I try my best to stay positive and think that, you know, after my chemo was, uh, after my week of chemo is done, after, you know, round three is done and I get, you know, a break until the next round of chemo. But sometimes it's, it's hard to, um, to think like that when you're in so much pain and discomfort and, uh, everything is just going the wrong way. And, um, 
it's just kind of, I just have different mixed emotions and, you know, with uh, my hair and stuff like that, that's obviously a big fear. Obviously, this video as a girl, is such it's, a great example. Um, you, you know, show girls, people this like, video. If anyone ever says to you, why would I lie about this? That's a phrase a lot of people throw out there. Why would sure. I lie about this? Yeah, show yeah, them yeah. this video and just yeah. be like, I don't know why you'd lie, but people do it. <laughs> Look at this fucking psychopath. Okay, well, I'll throw this out there. So she's talking about how tough it is to go through her chemo treatment. Um, she looks amazing. And her acting is terrible. Like, I wouldn't put this on my sizzle reel if I were her. Because I'm not buying any of this. Right. And I think the reason she was successful is because we now kind of live in a society where you're supposed to believe everything everyone says. <laughs> and so that makes it tricky to be like, hey, you don't really have cancer. <laughs> Yeah, she's fucking up the whole believe all women movement with this yeah, one. Yeah, she's making it tough on the others, the, the non-liars. So when you say, why would I lie? She raised $37,303 from 439 donors. And that is an average of $85 per donor. Well, I was, saying, I was telling you, I think this is a lot more common like than we realize because it's just so easy to make a GoFundMe or a Kickstarter or something. Yeah. Like... If we were to actually go through, every, I mean, I don't want to do it because I don't want to out people that are actually I'd be like, this fucker doesn't have cancer. He just dies the next week. <laughs> but like you could probably find a lot of people that are just bullshitting because they need to pay their rent or whatever. Well, yeah, there's got to be a percentage of people who get away with that. Definitely, I would I mean, imagine. Yeah. Yeah. She's certainly not the first person to do it. And, and there's enough simps out there that if you're a cute girl and you're like, hey, guys, guess what I have? Cancer. Wants to give me money. You, <laughs> you know, if you live, you either, can I be your boyfriend? Yeah, you either show your boobs or you talk about your fake cancer. Like whatever. <laughs> simps are gonna simp. She should be able to keep the money, in my opinion. But I guess yeah, she has to I give mean, it she, all back. Well, so the crazy thing is, she used other people's, um, uh, like medical information. She would steal. Oh, yeah, other, yeah, yeah. She would steal other people's. Med so one day, someone who actually has cancer just went online and was like hey that's me <laughs> that's from that's from my report what well the, the best fuck? part is she got deep into this and oh, yeah. she was talking specifics about radiation and chemo and she had 90 rounds of radiation she said i don't know if that's a lot it sounds like a lot to me it feels it sounds, like a lot yeah. sounds like too much well, I don't put know. it this way it's 90 more than she actually had <laughs> correct yeah yeah it is a lot actually it's 90 more so what happened was she was getting big enough that medical professionals who know how this shit works started watching and going, well, this doesn't add up at all. No doctor would do this. This doesn't even make sense. Right. She has a, she, has, she claims she has a tumor the size of a football on her spine. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I if mean, you're gonna, if you're gonna do it, go big, you know? Really yeah, I guess so. Right. Yeah, exactly. We'll believe. <laughs> <laughs> but Dave, Sarah says, you won't read this, but can you tell me a word you don't know the meaning to? Yes. Onomatopoeia. I don't know the meaning to that word. Am I supposed to know that? It means like uh, it's words that describe noises, I think. Oh, okay. Why? Well, I, I have Tourette's onomatopoeia. Yeah, sure. Does that, does that work? Close enough. Let's go back to Maddie. Let's see what Maddie's talking about. She's upset. She's having a bad day. Hair is a big part of the, everybody's lives, but um, to think of the potential of losing it or... Um, it's just kind of one more thing uh, in the fire that um, right is now hard. in her head. So, she's saying, "All right, Maddie, pretend you have cancer. Reach that emotion. Just imagine yeah. what it would be like to have cancer. If you think you're going to die, losing your hair is not something you're going to dwell on at this point. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> gosh, I might be unattractive in my open casket. <laughs> yeah, oh, well, who cares at that point? single cancer patients are so catty around the ward. <laughs> um, hopefully nothing else falls out. And, um, it's kind of been a little eventful. Wait, what else does she think is going to fall out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, there goes an ovary. God damn it. Um... In the cancer world, event pull is not good. Um, I'd rather have an uneventful pull week because it means you're kind of just coasting along. But um, I've had a little bump in the road. But you guys know how cancer is. 
is. You know? <laughs> she has this range of emotion from emotionless to no emotion whatsoever. It's really impressive. She's so she's obviously again. If I was just scrolling through TikTok, maybe I would believe her. But we have the yeah. we're we're lucky enough to watch these, knowing what happened, and it's just so obvious that she's trying to relate to what she thinks a cancer patient would be like. Yeah, guys, I had a really rough week, um, so I only went to the gym five times uh, <laughs> because this chemo and radiation. I'm going to skip to this next video real quick because okay. this is where like she's really losing the thread on it. I think days where like you know I'm too sick from treatment where I I can't go anywhere. I, I just want to point out, so she's talking about she's having a bad day. She spent 30 minutes on her makeup alone. She looks perfect. <laughs> I, Mike, if I had to consult with her, I would say maybe don't look perfect. Look like shit. You, you want to look like shit? We'll be pouring yeah. out more money for you, sweetheart. Her, her hair is perfect. Her makeup is perfect. She looks great. And she's going to complain about how she can't make it to the gym, which is yeah. not a priority for people who are dying with cancer. But I'm, I don't, what do I know? Not even from a believability standpoint, but like if you look sickly, we're gonna shell over a few more bucks. Right. You know? Yes. Make make some money while they while the sun is up, sweetheart. <laughs> I can't do anything. Um, I feel like shit, you know, I can't get ready. I just lay in my bed and um yeah. puke, you know. I do just, I do cancer things all day. <laughs> yeah. She does really a lot cancer-y. about that other video, she talks about she was up all night puking. Meanwhile, she looks like she got a good eight and a half hours in. <laughs> I'm like, just not buying it at all. You know, like use that makeup to put some bags under your eyes or something. I was puking and experiencing various other symptoms. Uh, hold yeah. on, let me look this up. <laughs> yeah, she's googling as she's talking. Uh... Extremely physically exhausting, but also the mental part of it. I think it's 10 times worse. And I think anybody that has struggled with anything uh, when it comes to kind of like their mental oh, Carl, health, pause this, please. People... I, I'm i feeling ill. Oh, no. You all I right? I need super chats, please. <laughs> the only thing that can kill me. If you folks chats. could donate a few dollars, <laughs> I may make it through this episode, please. Guys, I don't think Mike's long for this world. Can we please help him out here? <laughs> I'd hate to have to do this show with Vinny. Please, guys, help me out. Help us if out. If you don't want to hear Cardiff Electric. <laughs> yeah, if you want to keep this show Cardiff free, please <laughs> <laughs> donate with Super Chats. I like that she says the mental part is the most stressful. Well, yeah, when you're running a scam, that's extremely stressful. <laughs> the mental part of it. Guys. You would not believe the hours I've put in looking into what cancer patients do all day. It is exhausting. It's exhausting. And just to think that I have $37,000, I'm going to launder at some point. <laughs> I'm not even sure how to do that yet, but I'll Google it. We'll get there eventually. And it, uh. I mean, like, people feel bad asking, like, hey, would you mind showing me what this money is going to? But whether it's this girl or John Melendez, people yeah. are ripping you off all around the country. Well, Zubak pulled a, a similar scam too uh, early last year. Oh, right. His buddy his, got in a car accident or something? His buddy got in a car accident and, and they didn't have insurance. They were in between insurance providers yeah. for whatever reason. And he was going to start donating 75% of his merch sales to this guy. Well, the risk is you're like, prove it. And the next day, their mother responds with the obituary. It's like, you know, he was, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't wanna, like, oh, I'm not going to be that guy unless it's, <laughs> unless it's Zumach or Melendez. Then I'm like, eh, I bet they're lying. You're pretty safe, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, this woman was arrested. And uh, this is going to be a problem for her. Thank you. Yeah, it's kind of a shame. It's a, you know, she was uh, living the American dream. She was pulling herself up by her boots. Yay, and- super chats. Harpua729 with $2. Oh, no, not Vinny. All right, buddy. Thank you. You are going to help us keep this a Vinny Vinny free environment. (laughs) All right, Mike, I have a treat for you, my friend. Okay. Who are these these music people? (laughs) It's one of our new singers. (laughs) So from the great Seamus who sent this in to me, thank you very much for sending this in. Sarah Brand is our musician this week 
Are you familiar with Sarah Brand? I don't think I am, no. Oh, you're going to love this. She has a uh, song called Red Dress. It has 2.3 million views on oh, YouTube. Wow. I've been missing out. Oh, no, it's 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 stellar. And actually, the great Simu sent this to me, and they said, Carl, can you tell me what key this song is in? And I thought, well, that's a, a weird question. I mean, I could probably dive in and figure that out, but I'm not sure why he would ask. And then I clicked the link, and I went, oh, I get it. singing in key is what the man wants you to do it's always amazing that uh lady like this gets to the point where she's like all right time to record time to put it to music <laughs> yeah we nailed it we got this one <laughs> and by the way mike i don't think you're watching this but it's not just her voice that's off oh okay, there's something right. about there's something about her that's just off okay. in every single way let's get to the chorus at least You know what the chorus is winning me over <laughs> yeah you're, you're like i will be singing it later. <laughs> yeah it's pretty good right <laughs> so she's she's in church and she's got this red dress on she's trying to like dance provocatively and everyone's looking at her like what the fuck i think they're just hearing her sing i don't think anyone's like upset about her red dress these are just actual passers-by <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're just the legit reactions to someone who could not fucking sing it just sounds terrible people are like what is going on right now uh, now th I also wonder how that gets to 2.3 million viewers. Like she has, does she have a fan base or something? <laughs> well, I think this got I think it got a little viral. <laughs> I don't, because it's funny that uh, you asked that she has less than 10,000 subscribers. Okay, that's what I want. Is it this but, song or yeah, is it the just, whole collection? I think it's this song. Okay, right. There's 16,000 comments. <laughs> <laughs> the first one is no auto tune, no swearing, no flexing, no talent. I don't, but she's very brave, though. You're not considering that. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You know? Of course. Hey, Dennis Michaels, thank you very much for the $2. He says, tell Mike more Ojeda, please. You've got it, buddy. People can't get enough of Richard Ojeda. Is he back on YouTube yet? Yeah, but he does too many boring fucking interviews. We need Fine him guy. to respond to the chat more. He'd really get mad. Uh, what I love right. about him is he'll, he'll tweet out, like, um, I'm looking for hate mail. And then he even has a segment called Hate Mail. And he's like, let's okay. get to the hate mail. And it's like, Richard, you were so spot on about this fucking Trump. Oh, that's not hate mail. <laughs> no, it's hate about other people. If he just had a segment that was who's getting curb stopped, that's yes. what I would tune in for. Like, who are we curb stopping this today? Let's go. Millions of views. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm all in on that. All right. This is a fun uh, thing that you found with some Twitch people. Who are these socials? Who are these Twitch people? <laughs> so Doug they... actually had like a professional voiceover person in the studio and just record. They're going, who are these Reddits? Who are these Twitter posts? <laughs> who are these Twitch people? We just... spare no expense, folks. <laughs> Put all that together for us. <laughs> okay. You kids at home, if you want a professional show like us, a little peek <laughs> behind so the curtains. Done. On how that happens. All right, so Atrioc. Yes. You want to give a background, or should I just play it? Um. Well, so he's a very popular Twitch streamer. He's. Uh, I think that's all you really need for the setup. We'll do most of the explaining. I think. Okay. All right. So let's uh, let's see what's going on here with Atrioc. People are upset with him, I guess. 
Former Twitch employee turned creator just lived through the script of an unwritten Black Mirror episode on his stream. His viewers saw a tab open for an AI corn site that isn't exactly free. The tab the site was open to included female Twitch streamers. He later apologized and provided an explanation. However, some were pleased with this tear-filled apology, while others were disgusted that a man would jerk off to people he knew professionally, who didn't give anyone permission to share their private photos, let alone use AI to undress them like a rapist would, in the words of some Twitter users. So, Hold on a second. Rapists don't use AI to undress people. They use their hands. Yeah, they roll up their sleeves and do it the old-fashioned <laughs> way. Right. <laughs> so I already disagree with that. Also, so they're saying that this guy worked for Twitch. He yeah, was an so, employee. But in the sense that he was a partner. Like he made his money from Twitch streaming right. the way Pokimane and a lot of these girls do as well. So, so basically they're co-workers. Essentially, yeah. And, and who they, would they, want to have sex with a co-worker? Yuck! They've done Could stuff you together. Imagine? And essentially what happened was he was online. He didn't realize he was online. Much like my old pal Jeffrey Tubin. <laughs> right, uh, yes. People could see his screen. And what they saw was he was paying for deep fake porn of uh, Pokimane and Maya, who are Twitch streamers that he works with. So he was caught jerking off to that. He was very embarrassed by it. Very understandable. But then he gave an apology. His wife is behind him. Mm. So I guess maybe because he's married, so he was extra embarrassed Brutal. by this or something. Brutal. Yeah. Didn't the Alex the Jones one time showed his uh, phone screen or something, and he had all these tabs open, and one of them was like trans porn or something like that? Like, it happens all the time. If you fuckers are streaming all day, that, uh, yes. psychic, that psychic Natalia that we talked about, she's literally doing a TikTok video where she's like, you fuckers got my address that's wrong, blah, blah, blah. And you hear her husband, there's someone off camera go, you posted it on Facebook. <laughs> yeah, right. But they don't even realize they're doing it. <laughs> this is the thing. I learned this from Dick Masterson, who taught me, you need to have a machine that you use just for porn that is not used for anything else you do. It should be smart. in an attic somewhere. No one should know where it is. It should be at least 12 years old, this yeah. device. It can't stream. It doesn't have a webcam. We had a guy We had a guy here in Boston that worked for uh, WEEI and uh, forever. His name was Larry Johnson. He was an old guy. Seemed like a very, very nice guy. He was known for being like somewhat religious and everything. And one day he randomly tweets out just a link to dominatrix porn. With no, there's no, oh, no, no caption or anything. And people are like, oh, no. what the fuck is this? Yeah. And so people quickly realized he must have found the share button by accident on Pornhub. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, hey, I want to thank uh, Mint Salad, who uh, donated $20. Happy Super Chat Thursday. I'm sorry you guys have to circle through these socials every week to entertain us. Thank you, Mint Salad. And people should check Thank out you. Mint Salad on her Fansly page. There's no AI porn going on there. It's all real, baby. No, but for a few dollars, Atrioc can tell you where there could be. Well, that's the whole thing about this. So this is how I understand it. Explain it to me if I'm an idiot on this. So basically what AI does is it takes the face of the Twitch streamer and puts it on another naked girl's body or creates another... Pretty much, Naked yeah. girls. So it's basically for like a guy with doesn't have good imagination. Yeah, or it's a, it's the video equivalent of having good Photoshop skills, I guess. Right. You know? Yes, precisely. So now here's what I'll say: for society, this is horrible <laughs> because people are going to be posting videos that we think are of girls that aren't and shit like that. Oh yeah, but, gosh darn it, that would suck. Oh, I'd hate that. Uh, That'd I'm be just terrible. Saying, it would for them. Oh no! <laughs> Please say it ain't so. Imagine you're the sugar daddy to that 17-year-old we saw on TikTok. You wouldn't Wait, like that happening. Wait, you, you think that could happen, Mike? For real? <laughs> you think you think she'd like me? You <laughs> this fuck too many good ideas. <laughs> All right, let's watch his apology. This is wild. Yeah. So everyone knows that when you fuck up on the internet and people get mad at you, you got to make a video where you're crying. Absolutely. And you feel really bad about it. And then everyone goes, oh, all right, never mind. Sorry about that, guy. And then fucking at 2 a.m., you know, I've been, I've been watching so much fucking, I've been reading so much fucking AI stuff. I'm reading all this fucking stuff about AI and 
and uh, I always like this. This is the Pete technique. Townsend defense. I was doing. Oh research. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm researching. Right, exactly. I am yeah. a man of research. I go through many, <laughs> many books and files. Yeah, yeah of course. In defect music, defect art, and everything, and I'm in these fucking discords, and I was. I just feel so embarrassing to admit. But I was on fucking Pornhub, dude. I was on a fucking regular ass normal fucking website, and there was an ad. There's an ad on every fucking video for this fucking. So I know other people must be clicking it because it's on every fucking video for a fucking deep fake thing. And then I click it and I'm fucking in this fucking rabbit hole. And at 2 a.m., I fucking. I, I don't know. I got morbidly curious and I click something. And I. and I It's just fucking. It's it's gross. I it's clicked gross, something. I'm sorry. I'm I really, had to click I'm many really things, like downloading their pictures, yeah. <laughs> uploading it to this website, putting in my credit card information. <laughs> yeah, ex explaining the three things that turned me on and uh, what, what my favorite features were out of Naked Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoop, all my credit card <laughs> is in the computer now. <laughs> I, just, I just keep typing, damn it. <laughs> it's not, I don't know, it's, it's so embarrassing. I just really want to get a across. It's not like a fucking pattern of behavior. And I, you know, I don't, I don't know what I want to say or not. But... Wait, what's embarrassing? The fact that he jerks off to porn, or that he's crying on the internet? Because well, I, I would say the latter. What he means there is the fact that he got caught. <laughs> yes, correct. And I like that he blamed it on advertising. And like, like what, what can you do? He, he got an advertisement. You know, like for me, Mike. Uh, whenever I watch the Bud Bowl during the Super Bowl every year, I didn't even like Bud Light. And then the next two weeks, that's all I'm drinking. I'm like, all of a sudden, ah, fuck. Horses. You can't help it. <laughs> they got me again. These fucking Bud Bowl commercials. Damn it. I just love, I love that with anything. It's, I'm trying to think if it's better. I'm th trying to think of which is first. There is th the defense of research. I was doing research. Or there was a Kevin Spacey or like Chris D'Elia. Chris D'Elia's apology was he's like, you know what, gang? You got me. God damn it. I've been cheated. <laughs> I cheated on my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah. caught me. Yes, those are the only accusations about me, and you got me. I think that might be second in line to, I am just a, I can't stop myself from consuming information. <laughs> you, right, so David Letterman is a perfect example of this. All right, kids, gather around. Let me explain to you who David Letterman is. He came out of his show one night, and he goes, hey, everyone, I just want to let everyone know that I've been a creep. Yeah. And everyone's like, wait, what? What's going on right now? Yep. I've been a creep and I'm being blackmailed because I've been sleeping with interns uh, up in my office and this has been going on for quite some time and my wife found out it's a whole big problem and you get ahead like, of it like old Dave right that's the way to do it by the way not the I don't even like young girls who work for me that I have that <laughs> has a power imbalance it's not even my thing I, I can't well, believe so I did what this I Here's what I wanted to say is that this HRAC guy should be – that's a very embarrassing thing to happen. You should be embarrassed. That's very normal. What's weird is that he's making this video. It's an hour-long uh, Twitch stream, by the way. That oh, he did. God. And he's weeping the entire time. And not only that, but his wife is standing behind him. His weeping. poor wife. Oh, And it's God. like, is this a thing that we should be in tears about? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's dumb. It's embarrassing. But even, like, Jeffrey Tubin didn't, you know, break down right. and sob. Go away for a month and then come back. Everyone will forget about it. There'll be something else going on. Eliza Blue will do something else stupid. Like, you don't have to confront this right away. I just, I can't, I just love learning so much. <laughs> and now I'm worried I can't. I was, I was also researching Bitcoin. <laughs> and so I use the blockchain to make naked girls and jerk off to. Just, Folks, the real loser today is knowledge. <laughs> you know, <laughs> knowledge can't be spread in society any longer. Yeah, what are you supposed to do? Tommy D with two dollars, great show. Thank you, Tommy D. Thanks. I appreciate it. All right, so now let's see the response to his um, apology. This let's is see one how of the people... girls that was involved. Yeah, this is one of the girls. Let's see how she uh, takes this. I'm sure, she'll be fine with it. Yeah. Let me just get the uh, volume going because. Some of these socials uh, have the volume up and some don't. All right, here we go. I want to go live because this is what pain looks like. Oh, God. This is what it looks like. Okay. She's already All lost right. me. Now, I want to say, yeah. on, other, on other podcasts, uh, some people have cast aspersions on me that I may be somewhat of a rape apologist, which oh boy. I think is too far. But the message- Hold on, I'm let me call Vinny. Hey, Vinny, do you want to co-host another show with me? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> the, Christ. The message that I have tried to send is like, 
how far do we keep going where we consider people victims? Like when Aziz got canceled. Right. Like essentially the girl complained about giving him a consensual blowjob. Yeah. Now we're set where you're a victim because a guy did the equivalent of jerking off to a picture of you, basically. Oh, yeah, yeah, home. no. Oh, she explains it. This, this is insane right here. Fuck the fucking internet. <laughs> Fuck the constant exploitation and objectification of women. It's exhausting. I, I don't know that uploading a video of you complaining about the internet is really going to have the same impact that you want it to. I don't even like this this thing that you guys are all watching me on that has over a million views. The so internet just... is terrible, so I'm going to yeah. upload a video where a thousand people will respond, you go, girl. You're the greatest. You're <laughs> <Yeah>. a hero. <laughs> Fuck Atrioc for showing it to thousands of people. Fuck the people DMing me pictures of myself from that screen from that website <laughs> guys are dming her like hey this isn't you but it'd be pretty cool if it was hey you got any more of these <laughs> <laughs> hey how do your beef curtains compare to this girl i'm just curious if the ai is accurate or not let me know <laughs> fuck you all if you are able to look at women who are not selling themselves or benefiting off of being seen sexually they're not benefiting they're not selling it they're not platforming it themselves if you are able to look at that you are the problem oh that explains it all right there doesn't it we are all rapists oh, what no. she's saying there is she's pissed that she's not getting paid for people jerking off to her <laughs> that's what she's upset about right here she's like look it i don't care if you jerk off to me but i'm not getting a dime from it so that's kind of my only fans you cunts <laughs> yeah right <laughs> you, cheap you see women as an object you should not be okay doing that and it should not be a part of my job to have to pay money to get this stuff taken down well she's trying to turn me off it's working it should not be part of my job Start to ticking, be lady. harassed to see <laughs> of me all right i'm around. back it should not be something that is found on the internet it shouldn't be that's this shouldn't be a part of my job and the fact that it is is exhausting I, I'd love for her to know what a real job is like. Like, I, You'll never hear me complain about my job. And the fact that she's like, if this is exhausting, everybody, being on the internet and being famous and making tons of money, it's just too much. This is exhausting. Am I right, roofers? <laughs> and the person that made that website, I'm going to fucking sue you. I promise you. With every part of my soul, I'm going to fucking sue you. That's get a lawyer. That's probably better than a soul. Yeah, I, I was going to say, like, lawsuits aren't won or lost based on how much of your soul you put into the suit. Kid, you haven't made a good argument, but you got a lot of heart. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I could tell you, you haven't made much sense, but you put a lot of elbow grease into this case. <laughs> this, my decision is not based in law at all today. Today, <laughs> I just feel it bad for a, a girl who's crying in my courtroom. So, uh, Luckily for you, I'm a judge that will allow some nonsense. <laughs> I have to tell you, I've been, this threat of being sued has happened to me multiple times. I never take it seriously. If you're going to sue someone, just sue them. Just do it. Just yeah. do it. It's really that, again, stupid. That's good. This girl should sue that. Like, I think it is shitty that you can just do whatever the fuck you want. It's going to get very confusing. Like, I think in the, our first episode, we played that Joe Rogan deep fake. Like, shit's going to be real confusing if we just sure. let this stuff happen. But also... There's nothing you can really do about it, so I don't know if sobbing over it works. Well, there is something you can do about it, Mike, because the way that AI works, it's not too much unlike a search engine. It looks for all the information that's available out there, and then it tries to compile answers based on the information that's out there. And I just want to let all the AI bots know that I have eight inches, even when I'm soft. And if anybody wants to do an AI version of me with my six-pack abs... And my eight inches of girthy cock that goes down to my knee. It's then, so funny you, you know, say that because earlier I was stroking my giant penis and I was thinking to myself, I hope the internet <laughs> can capture this one day. <laughs> so it's funny that see you how, mentioned that. See how easy it is, kids? <laughs> Let's make sure to transcribe this episode and put it up on both of our websites if you don't mind. <laughs> yes, and sir. then Carl Hamburger said, <laughs> Ethan Klein, H3H3. This fucking yeah. guy. So Ethan Klein's a fucking maniac. 
I am not a fan of his at all. Nor am I, which is why I kind of want to throw this in there because it's like yeah. this is something I would always defend Ethan Klein on, but it's also what you get when you go after someone like Joe Rogan relentlessly and you build up that fan base and then try to be like an edgy guy in some way. Hold on a second. Dennis Michael says, and normal feet. And I like that Ryan does his Coke can Carl. Yeah. Oh, my eyes look perfectly straight, by the way. I'm always looking right at you. Uh, Don't eat bugs says that's Carl's autobiography. The soft eight. (laughs) <laughs> all right people are picking up i want to put it down i think ethan Ru- or ethan klein ethan ralph <laughs> whoops i think that ethan klein is so unfunny i don't understand why he's successful as a youtuber i guess it's like timing because i've yeah. watched a lot of his stuff i listened to his podcast i reviewed it he's not a witty guy he's not good at interviewing people he had a disaster of an interview with bill burr like he's just not good at oh this. that's right yeah yeah, yeah, he I mean, seems that... very dry, and the wife is even drier on that show. Like, it just seems very it's garbage. It's exhausting. And even like um, when he had Bobby and Kalila on during the whole Brendan Schaub controversy, right? Like, they kind of took over. Like, they were basically interviewing themselves at a certain point. Like, yeah. Ethan Klein isn't, it doesn't seem like an interesting guy to me, really. Well, he also seems miserable. This is the other thing about Ethan Klein is that he's angry at everybody and he's fighting everyone all the time. It's like, dude, what else do you want in life? You, you've recognized, you've realized your dream, you're rich. And I'm not one of these guys like, oh, you're rich, shut up. But like, he, he literally got rich being a YouTuber. It's what he was trying to accomplish. Right. Like, fucking relax, buddy. Right. <laughs> things things could be worse. Yeah. All but right. This video is like, like, like I said, he was going after Rogan for the whole Spotify shit and misinformation. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, if you want everything you do taken seriously, this is what's going to happen. All right. Let's uh, let's see what he's up to. Let's see this hilarious uh, video he's got. Why? <laughs> Why? All right. This is taking a second, but basically what's happening is Ethan Klein and his buddies are all watching what we just watched. Yeah. This this teary eyed uh, Twitch streamer who's upset that AI was figuring out what, what she might look Invented. like naked. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What is going Something, on? Something. Sorry, don't don't mind me. If you are able to look at women. Who are not selling themselves or benefiting off of being seen sexually. Okay, so, Mike, I have questions. Because what we're about to watch now is these guys all cracking up. They think what they just did is the funniest thing ever. Was that chestnuts roasting on an open fire? Is that the sign? So I think what they were going for was the old, like, Opie and Anthony laugh track sort of a thing. I don't get the chestnuts roasting I don't get it at all. Yeah, I really don't get it. Basically, they're watching this girl sob, and they started playing a music bed, and then they can't control themselves. They're laughing so hard. Ethan's putting his face in his shirt. This other guy is covering his face. (laughs) They're laughing their asses off. Well, this is something they learn. I know Ethan Klein became friends with Tom Segura. (laughs) Yeah, I think this is something like West Coast podcasts have picked up. Where it's like, just la- have someone in studio laughing uncontrollably. You're evil. Ah. You're fucking evil. <laughs> and what they're all reacting to, and they're, all of them are putting their heads in their shirts, and, and they're embarrassed that they're laughing at this. But th- we're not taking any of this out of context. They were watching this girl cry. They started playing, I don't know, three seconds, two and a half seconds yeah. of chestnuts roasting on an open fire, whatever the fuck that music was sappy music and now they're all like this is the funniest thing we've they're ever done they're in hysterics done. so yeah i yeah. didn't even really get it but they're all in hysterics but the part that i found funny is that like ethan klein's fan base <laughs> responded fuck Dude, you fuck, bro <laughs> yeah but does ethan klein's fan base ever respond to anything but fuck you <laughs> i mean i don't follow it that closely but it seems like nobody likes anything that he does oh is that right i didn't realize he was trolled that much it's, uh, that's what it seems like. Every time he shows up on my radar, it's because everyone's saying he's an asshole. I don't know. Oh, this seemed more like people holding him to a certain standard. That's how I took it. Well, yeah. I mean, he's from that that generation, I suppose. Yeah. All right. Are you ready to switch gears on this? I am, yes. <laughs> All right. I think I want to head over to Reddit. 
Who are these Reddits? <laughs> these, these two singers working for you, Mike? <laughs> I don't know if I'll still enjoy them next week, but I like them. Yeah. All right. <laughs> They're good for one week. Fair <laughs> enough. So this woman, now this is a, a Reddit thread, and um, I'll just let it play because I think it kind of speaks for itself here. Hey, if you pose a transformation of your body, which... Just be happy in your new body. Just be go off and be happy in your new body. We stop shitting on your your old fat self. Do I need to point out this woman is overweight? She's <laughs> she's very distraught and she's overweight. It took me a second to be like, what is she talking about? And then I realized she was mad at people for fat shaming themselves by saying, not saying like what a fat cunt I was, just being like, hey, look, I lost weight. No, ba yeah, basically she's upset with before and after photos yes. is what she's <laughs> crying about here. That wasn't a stupid person that you slapped and got into gear. That was a human being. I'm a human being. <laughs> and you shouldn't have to fucking shrink your body to have value. And it's like, please stop advertising to me. Please get off my fucking for you page. Look, like there's enough space for that i don't want it how many times do you have to report and say not interested to your transformation videos you know what i think would be really funny is if someone documented their journey of getting fat and they did a before and after like mm -hmm. ah, i just decided to stop exercising and eat twinkies all day and this is where i'm at yes finally a hero <laughs> yeah i know i wonder I huh if only i had met Vinny 10 years ago <laughs> I really could have. I really could have put together something interesting here. Damn it! I know I keep using the word exhausting, but imagine how exhausting. Like I'm just picturing if I walk out of the studio later and my girlfriend's crying, and I just had to be like, ah, someone lose weight again. <laughs> you look at Instagram. <laughs> yeah, right. I know. Like, I want to tell this girl like, hey, it's not your gross body. This is the before picture. Don't worry about it. We're not talking about you specifically because you're I mean, not going to lose weight. You don't have to I love to about look that. at people she follows and just find someone that lost like 80 pounds, like a great story. And just look yeah. at all the comments like, hey, good for you. How'd you do it? And then see one just middle finger emoji. You're like, die, bitch. I want to see like Bob Levy or someone who smokes cigarettes every day. Just be like, oh, what are these assholes who are taught bragging about quitting smoking? What the fuck is that all about? You think you're so much fucking better than me because you don't smoke say, anymore? It'd be great if Bob Levy was weeping while saying that. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, that'd be I just don't understand. I like to smoke. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. All right. Yeah, that would be funnier. Mike, one of the things that we did on a previous episode of Who Are These Socials is we did a movie review of a movie we haven't seen. Right. We watched the trailer, and then we reviewed the movie. Now, I was told that I'm stealing this from ROTC. I well, did not realize right. that. Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. I'm sorry if uh, Revenge of the Sis has done this before. Hey, you know what? I know Royce. I'll smooth it over. Don't worry. About <laughs> All right. It, buddy. Please do. <laughs> you know what's you, I, Can I tell you a quick fun story about Royce? So we're doing DabbleCon, and Royce and Mersh were goofing on John years ago. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I think I was the first. We did it a very long time ago, but who cares? Whatever. It doesn't make a difference. <laughs> So Muttering Jay, uh, one of my buddies on Twitter, sends a note to Royce and Mersh like, hey, why weren't you guys invited to Dabble God? You guys started the ah, Suttering well, John start. thing. <laughs> well, he literally sent it to them as just kind of like, uh, hey, guys, let's, we're all in this thing, you know, whatever. And unfortunately, they took it real seriously. And was just, yeah, we don't get fucking invited to any of this shit, even though we're oh, the ones no. that always started. It's like, whoa, whoa what, what just happened right now? Oh, no. Like, you took it the wrong way completely. And then I'm getting notes from people like, how come you're shutting ROTC at this event? like, these guys are streaming 24-7. I, I can't even get a hold of them when they're not on the internet streaming in order to, like, Try to put together something, so I'd be happy oh. to collaborate with them. Of course. That's why Carl forced me to send that Brendan Schaub stuff we have later. He wants to copy ROTC. Of this course, of a yep. That's that's been my uh, trajectory on the internet. I just watch what they do. <laughs> oh, they're going to Rumble. All right, in three years, I'm also we'll going there. to Rumble. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, you ready to do a movie review? I am. All right, you are from Boston. Yes. I assume you grew up a Patriots fan. Oh, yeah. 
Oh. I bet. I oh. bet you were a fan oh, of Tom Brady on, and of Rob Gronkowski. <laughs> Am I right about that? My heroes. Yeah. yeah. They, won, they won a lot of Super Bowls together. All right. Let's watch a movie oh. trailer together. The game's about to start. Oh, there's Tom. Oh, oh what a beautiful man. I like Gronkowski. We know, Tris. We've all read your Gronk erotica. It's not erotica. It's fan fiction. Very sexy fan fiction. This is a movie called 80 for Brady. This is the official trailer. It is out in movie theaters only this weekend. So and exciting. this is a movie about four elderly women who are giant Patriots fans. They wear the jerseys. They get together and watch the games together. They're writing erotic fan fiction about the tight end on the team. Very realistic premise to start off, which I like. Of course, yeah. Because everything about this movie is in reality. It's literally Tom Brady on the Patriots. It's literally Rob Gronkowski on the Patriots. Like, like they're they're bringing in all of these real elements. Yeah, Edelman's and then we have to it, like I think, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, and then we have to take this leap to this idea that there's these weirdo women in in wigs who are you know done up in a way that. No normal person who hasn't been in Hollywood all their lives would look this way when they're 80. They still look well, terrible. Don't get me wrong. Dust off your clams, ladies. We're getting laid. I, think that's, <laughs> I have a feeling that's the route this is taking. So this is Lily Tomlin, Jane Fonda, Rita Marino, and Sally Field. And then, oh, no, Rob Corddry. I like him. Oh, God, all right. Let's, let's, just, let's just watch it. Then we can talk about it. Aren't you tired of the same old boring lives? Let's go to the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is no place for four old women. This could be Tom's last one. He's almost 40. That's like 80 in people years. Yeah, we're 80 in people almost years. 40. This, is a, this is a period piece. Yes, correct. It was back when he was on the Patriots. <laughs> I didn't yeah. realize that we were going back in time. We're going back in time here, yes. <laughs> That's very and exciting. do you do you like that joke? She's like, she's 40. It's almost like 80 in people years. They're like, well, we're 80 in people years because they have to really drive it home. It's not enough that the name of the movie is 80 for Brady. They you really have to drive home that they're also in their 80s. Oh, if we could be serious for a second, what I worry about with this movie, I feel like they may make too many age jokes. I'm, oh, I'm you, you think that so? Might happen. I, th I think the age might come up once or twice. Oh, uh, hey, real quick. Yay, super chats. So Timothy McDonough explains this Ethan Klein thing. He says... That version of Chestnuts is sung by a Swedish guy with a thick accent. Last couple episodes, they dropped the sound by Ethan is obsessed with it. It's become an inside joke for the show. Okay. Oh, I had a feeling. All right. That I had doesn't a feeling there was yeah. more to it than that. I know. It doesn't. But thank you for the $20, sir. Thank you for clearing that up. Thank you. Thank you. We need this trip. I can't believe we're actually here. Taking this one. He's cute. So you don't have any tickets? How much for four? 10,000. 10,000? Well, I have a 20 in my strap on. All right. Again, very realistic. Four women decide we're going to go to the Super Bowl. They don't have tickets. They just fly to wherever the Super Bowl is and hope to be able to get in. Makes sense, right? I gotta say, you know what, ladies? You want to make strap on jokes? That's fine. But don't go half ass with it. Like, really go all the way. Show Lily Tomlin getting her ass eaten. You know? Oh, no, no, I no. There's no. real graphic shit in here. Sally Field has a fanny pack. This is this is why the humor is so sophisticated and, and great. So they're calling it a strap on, but it's actually a fanny pack. And Sally Field, what she's going to do here is she's going to show that a fanny pack can be a strap on if you put it over your shoulder oh. for some reason. I'll wait until you get done laughing, and then we can get back to it. <laughs> All right. That's a fanny pack. If you wear it like this, it's a strap-on. Wow. I get it. We it all so use that term differently. I understand. Get it? Yeah. I like that these women with all this life experience have no idea how to attend a football game. That's the one thing they just couldn't figure out. Even it's, though they're obsessed with football, they watch every fucking game, they're writing books about it. They're like, all right, how do we get over to the Super Bowl? I have no idea. <laughs> we'll just go there and sad, figure it out. It's sad to think like these ladies, and, and men have done it too. There was that fucking Michael Douglas, Morgan Freeman movie years ago, shit like that. Mm -hmm. But like, it's sad that these ladies who are, you know, have been in Hollywood for fucking ever. Like Jodie Foster's a legend. <laughs> 
And she is still like your fucking aunt that is like, oh, wouldn't this be cute if we did a movie like this? Wouldn't this be hilarious? I don't think Jodie Foster's in this one. Are you thinking of uh, Jane Fonda? Jane Fonda, I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. I, I, and and the, the idea, like I understand the charm of the show Golden Girls. Right. And I know people liked that. There were these old ladies talking about sex and, whoa, that's crazy. And it was a fun little sitcom. I don't know who the audience is for this. Are they trying to get football fans to watch this? Do they want people, geriatrics to watch? Like, who is interested in watching this movie? The other key with the Golden Girls is it was, like, well-written at a time where sitcoms still had good writers. True. To meet your beauty has no expiration date. Chris, I didn't flirt. He did. There's so much here to do. We could even win these tickets. This is a Spicy Wings contest. Bring the pain! I could use a... All right, so now we've introduced Guy Fieri. <laughs> this isn't the most convoluted script anyone's ever seen. I can imagine that the meeting where they're like, all right, so wait, now they're entering a contest to win tickets? Like, wh what do we do with this? Oh, no, no, no. I've already secured Guy Fieri. Oh, say no more. All right, cool. I'm in. This is a movie where they got the celebrities on board first and were like, let's figure out a way to cram them into this thing. <laughs> Joe Dicker, you, you mentioned it's a period piece. He yes. says these days are about 40 years too late for a period piece. Very well That's done, sir. I'll, I'll, yes. I'll entertain that even with your Canadian dollars. A little spice. What, what, I'm sorry, but what sickens me I, like you, as, a, as a Patriots yeah. fan? Yeah. I don't, I, again, I don't know if he's even in this trailer or not, but what I'm terrified of and what I know for a fact will happen is that there will be a scene where one of these ladies fucks Gronk. They're in bed together. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. And she makes a joke about how he wasn't that great. Like, here he we go. Her. That's what <laughs> have doing. you watched this trailer yet? I have not. I swear. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, Gronk <laughs> is coming up in a minute. But first, they have to get tickets for the Super Bowl. And the way they're going to do that is by eating really spicy food in this spicy food contest with Guy Fieri. I could use a little spice. I know her. If you black out, who you want me to call? An ambulance? Ow! If you did this to give us something to remember, why? Honey, it worked. Do you think you could get us in? Follow me. These are my dancers. I guess the the contest didn't work, so now they're trying to get in with the halftime entertainment. Right. So this is the part of the movie that every comedy needs. It's when 80-year-old women try to come up with a dance routine on the spot. Mike. <sighs> <laughs> Prove it. What well, dance moves you ladies know? A twist. A jerk? Let's do it! Hey! I've got another prediction for you. Christ. There's Gronk. They, they rap at some point in the movie. <laughs> yeah! Guaranteed. Guaranteed. For Guaranteed. Patriots fans that we're here to say. <laughs> so big. Thank you. Isn't that what friendship is? That we face the unknown together? Let's go, Golden Girls. Come. Oh, fuck. Are they going to learn something along the way, too? God damn it. It's my least favorite type of movie. I think they might learn that age is merely a number. <laughs> yeah, I don't want anyone learning anything yeah. along the way. <laughs> you know, maybe it wasn't the destination, but it was the journey all along. You're only as old as you feel, Carl. That's what I always say. <laughs> I thought the goal of this was to get to the Super Bowl, but really it was just for us to be great friends and hang out together. The oh, other Here's it. the other crazy thing. Remember the Ashton Kutcher, Reese Witherspoon trailer we watched? Yeah, 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 of course. I, I mean, maybe I'm crazy, but could you not just copy paste the music and stops from that? Oh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, You know, crazy music, punchline, pause music. <laughs> Trailers it's the are exact same formula template. every fucking trailer. It's a template at this point, yes. Yeah. With me. Hey, what? No, Wait. Hard, no, 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 no. I like how they're showing that all these people have won Academy Awards. Yeah, the 70s. I mean, it's neat. It's that's, that's fun and all. <laughs> that's what I, I, I've used this before, but that's what like when you see a new series is from the producers of The Office. And it's, like, right. well, it's not Ricky Gervais, so do I really <laughs> right. <laughs> Let's go! It's Tom oh Brady. God, that's Tom Brady. Really making sure he tarnishes the legacy the second oh, he retires. <laughs> He wanted Dude, to make sure. He just announced his retirement, and then the next weekend, this shit comes out. He wanted to make sure theaters. the moment he was out of the game, we all forgot how great he once was. 
Just in case you thought Avatar 2 was a debacle, <laughs> here's 80 for Brady to make us all forget about it. Careful there, high dosage. High dosage? Oh, this is stupid. So at this point, they're given edibles. And I should have that should have been on my list of predictions. I'm sorry. Yes. My least favorite thing that happens in movies is people don't react to drugs the way that anyone would react to drugs. So right. these women eat marijuana instead of getting sleepy and crashing in their hotel room. They act like they're tripping on acid for, right. for whatever reason. Things. Yeah. <laughs> Everything slows. Yeah. Well, check this out. Oh, careful there. High dosage. High dosage. Excuse me, I'm looking for someone. Are you okay? I'm Guy Fieri. Not only is that not weed, they stole the fucking tranquilizer dart scene from yes. old school. Yes, <laughs> correct. <laughs> so the joke crazy. was, the joke was, she eats a brownie and then she walks into a room and everyone looks like Guy Fieri. Oh, Christ, because that's how, that's what marijuana is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Of course. You don't just fucking doze off. <laughs> no, yeah. You don't Where just like get, you don't just get paranoid and go, you know what, guys, I, I gotta get out of here. This is weird. No, no, no. Home. You actually you tell her I love her. Everything slows down. <laughs> oh god for <laughs> you. All right. I think that movie's gonna be good. Oh, it's so depressing. This is like um like the Yankees. I always thought of as like a even you know before I was really a Yankees fan back in the day. I always thought of the Yankees as like a polished you know pristine organization that wouldn't give into the horseshit that other teams do. Sure. And then I heard that Yankees, how you doing? Song, and then John Sterling started doing his shit, and I was like, oh, they're just like everyone else. And my view of the Patriots was always that they would never do this horse shit. And sure enough, the second Brady's done with his career, this is what he's doing. Dude, if Bill Belichick makes a cameo, I want him out of the no, league. I no want way. his son he out of the Scooter league. Die. There's no All right, way. If, how about this? If Bill Belichick makes a cameo, I want his son out of the league. Is, are you ca- cool with that? Oh, my God. No, Can no. He, I, I'm with it? you. I'm willing to sacrifice <laughs> Belichick if he's in this. I okay. don't think he would do it. But if he does, he's gone. <laughs> I don't know. He does that. Com- or he did that commercial. He's so awkward. You know what's sad is this is the perfect. He would be like, that'd be kind of crazy if I was in this, I guess. Some love <laughs> yeah, scene with Sally Field. Oh, God. <laughs> All right. I need a palate cleanser. All these socials. Who are these Twitter people? <laughs> Let's get over to Twitter. And this is uh, former NFL player Arian Foster <laughs> talking so this- about. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, there's more to it, but yeah, your Arian Foster, like you were saying, does a podcast with a PFT commenter from Barstool, yeah, uh, who is one of the hosts of Pardon My Take. And if you know anything about PFT, he's like a perpetual. Tr- his his entire life is a bit basically. He's one of those guys right. where everything is purposely sarcastic. He's trolling everyone. Yeah, and so they're on their podcast here and tweeted this clip out um tell me how you feel after we watch it i guess all right that sounds good sounds like a plan uh arian was telling me about how the nfl is rigged and how every year he used to get a script yeah day one of training camp that would Mm -hmm. get dropped off at his locker Mm -hmm. and you would have to you know it was like week one you'll do this week two you're gonna have a hamstring injury week three this is gonna happen yeah week four you're gonna get three touchdowns Mm -hmm. and so then you just have to did you memorize those before the season started, would you go and rehearse the script before every game? Uh, we were really dedicated to it. So it was more so like um, that's what practice was about. It was about practicing the script. Like this is what goes on and this is what we have to do <laughs> mm-hmm. in order to. Yeah. And this referee is going to miss this call yeah, because they hate you. Yeah, they love the Colts. Yeah, that sort like, of thing. Uh, WWF. So it's like, you yeah, know, we know what's going to happen. But you still got to put on a show. Yeah. What did yeah. you think when you got the script in 2016 that said your career was going to fall off a cliff when you stopped believing in God? That was 2015. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It's funny, before we started taping. All right. So, well, Carl, all right, we're all having fun with this. The NFL is, we're all having fun with this. The NFL is rigged thing. Obviously, we're all exaggerating and, and saying this, but the Bengals did get screwed, right? Am I crazy <laughs> to say the Bengals got screwed in the AFC I'm, Championship game with all these missed calls? I'm not even saying it's not fixed. I'm kind of with you on that. But <laughs> the great right, well, is... I, I, 
There's that a reason a why Mahomes is the quarterback at State Farm Stadium for the Super Bowl. Like they obviously the NFL wanted Mahomes there with their sponsor State Farm. I, I'm just saying. I actually do kind of agree with you, but it would be dic- <laughs> ridiculous to think there is a play by play script given out every year. Even also, even pro wrestling isn't that thought out, you know. They let the guys kind of fuck around. Aaron Foster at a time for a short time was like one of the best running backs in the league. He was great. Yes. And if he were saying this on a podcast, it would be <laughs> I mean, massive. massive yeah. News. Oh, yeah. It would be a, it would be a pretty big deal. And yet, Everyone would be talking reason, about it. For some reason, PFT and uh, Big T, I think, is the other guy in that video. They seem to be handling it very casually, very matter of fact. Yeah, but not everyone who saw this no. took it the way that you and I took it. Yeah, some people they're... saw it through the bullshit and said, PFT, stop in your tracks, my friend. Yeah. I'm calling you out. People like you and me watch that, and we kind of chuckle. And we go, oh, okay, I see what they're doing. Rubes but like then a, there's yeah. dumb people, the really, really dumb people who watch that and go, wait a second. <laughs> and by dumb people, of course, I mean Brendan Schaub. <laughs> My God. So, so Brendan Schaub tweeted out, this isn't real. The entire NFL is scripted. I get wanting views, but this ain't it. Face and palm <laughs> emoji hashtag NFL. PFT, your time is up, my friend. Arian Foster, you're done. Brendan Schaub has let us all know that these guys are being facetious. <laughs> that this was not really what's going on. Thank you, Brendan Schaub. <laughs> Thank you, Brendan. That you're the sleuth we needed on this one. I, I think like everyone's been duped by something on the internet. Like I get it. There's times sure. where you realize people are joking or whatever. Yeah. But as uh, as Jim Norton once said about Rich Voss, I think it's more the depth of the well that I'm fascinated by. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> like, every day there'd be something to post about on Reddit about Brendan Schaub. All right, I have one more uh, person to, to look at, one more social media account. Yeah, We're going to head cool. back over to, uh, to TikTok here. And actually, I think this probably, I have another um, stinger that probably makes sense for this one. Who are these very sensitive people? Uh, 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 uh. Okay. (laughs) Very sensitive people. So we're looking at at stuff with bits. And this is a person who describes himself, Solar, describes themselves as um, a did system disassociative identity disorder correct yeah they have this is a big thing now apparently yes they have cptsd which is complex ptsd um they have complex in the sense that it's post nothing really right i think that's what's complex about it's like how did this happen i don't know (laughs) who who the hell knows (laughs) yeah i just have ptsd what's the problem doc (laughs) what do you want from me i gotta explain it though (laughs) They have um, borderline personality disorder, general anxiety disorder, social anxiety disorder, major depressive disorder, and autism spectrum disorder. And I'm sure if they invent three more things tomorrow, they'll have those too. It was a simpler time where we just called them kooks, but you can't do that anymore. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So it starts off pretty easy, pretty easy peasy. This person's going to explain to us how gender works. Okay. There's a lot of TikTokers who are doing this. People like you and me, Mike, we don't get it. Sure. We need the educated youth of today to explain it to us. I appreciate it. I'm an open-minded guy. Gender is like time. Okay. Let me explain. Please. To quote the 10th doctor. Oh, boy. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, when Uh, actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective... Oh, shit. What did I click on? I clicked on something. (laughs) The eject button. (laughs) Yeah, I wish. When actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a great big bowl of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. 
All right, so we're going to be quoting Doctor Who to explain gender identity. I'm yes. already uh, lost, but let's see how. Well, as uh, I learned, the name "Stuff with Bits" is also a Doctor Who reference. So it's a oh, is pretty, it really? Okay, pretty cool gal she is. Yeah. Okay, let's see how they he uh, pull this out together. Now, people assume that gender is a strict progression of man to woman. But actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a great big bowl of wibbly-wobbly, non-binary stuff. Make sense? Perfect sense. Well, yeah, I mean, using science fiction to explain how there's all these different genders <laughs> actually does kind of make sense. But listen, I, I am a pretty open-minded guy. To me, that sounds like nonsense, but I also think like do whatever you fu do whatever you want, you know. Yeah, I, I don't care. Call yourself whatever you want. That's perfectly fine. Right. So we, we so got rid of the loony. Pretty normal by today's standards. We got rid of the loony bins, but not the loonies. So yeah, that's fine. Now they're on TikTok. Exactly. Whatever. It's for our entertainment. We're so it. it's not just about having multiple genders, though, is it? Mike? It's, it's certainly not, Carl. No, that's just where it starts. Hi, um, <clears throat> we're the solar system, that much we know, um, we're not really sure who we are today, it's been like that for a couple of days. Now, this person has multiple personalities, and that only makes sense if you know which personality you are. If you're just confused about who you are, that's like kind of basic teenager shit. This guy is such a, this guy is such a singlet. Am I right, everybody? <laughs> when I was a teenager, I knew I loved laughing at jerks, but that wasn't my identity yet, Mike. <laughs> I didn't know I could make a living from it. You know, it, it takes time to develop who you are. But all right, there let's are days back. there are days you just don't know who you are, and that a couple of different personalities take over, which we'll learn. Yes. Uh, she's going to teach us a lot here about this condition. <laughs> They are going to teach us a lot, I'm Mike. Sorry. I'm, oh, I'm so ignorant. Dis I'm, I'm a little disappointed in you. They are going to talk about how they are a solar system. Which, by the way, can I just say this? As far as pronouns go, they is actually accurate because she's so many I know. people. It's so funny you say that because I was thinking the same thing. Do they get pissed off when someone who's non-binary but only has one personality wants to be referred to as they? <laughs> I would no, be. We really know. are a they. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck your problem, singlet. So... I guess we just wanted to pop on here and let you know that the identity crisis doesn't end once you figure out you're multiple people. Anyway, I think that's all. This person is deeply disturbed. Oh, for sure. Carl, you know how I know that? I watched... <laughs> Oh my God! You sent me of these videos. You sent me a lot of videos. This one you labeled exhausting. <laughs> I think. By this point, I had, I had scrolled through about a hundred videos. <laughs> hey guys, it's River, and thank you so much for this question. I'm going to do my best to answer it as simply as possible. So somebody has already replied uh, to this comment, giving like a brief overview, but I wanted to go into a little bit more detail in this. Every personality has different pronouns. So this is River and River is he, they. I can't imagine it's easy to keep track of all of this nonsense. It's got to be a lot of work, right? Well, but not only that, not every gender was born a woman. I wanted to go into a little bit more detail in this video. So OSDD stands for Other Specified Dissociative Disorder. Um, there are four types of OSDD in the DSM-5. Uh, today we're going to be talking about OSDD-1, um, which is what we're pretty sure that we have. So OSDD-1 is broken down into two parts, OSDD-1A and 1B. And the easiest way to Wouldn't describe... Wouldn't you feel guilty the... doing this to someone? Like, <laughs> making yes. them learn this? <laughs> well, that's the, the note that I wrote down for myself is, it's well known that doctors and nurses when they're actually learning their craft or, or learning medicine, they get more sick than regular people because they're being exposed to all these diseases and disorders they didn't know about. And you can psych yourself into these things. This is the placebo effect. We know about this. It's a real thing. So 
what this person needs that we're watching here is a father from the 50s who just beats the shit out of them <laughs> and all of their stupid personalities just yes. beat their personalities out of them until Let's... they figure out they're not as special as they think they are there was a lot of things we were doing back in the day that were yes. very bad but you have to take elements of that sometimes Look, I'm not say, mike i'm not saying make america great again i'm not saying that <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These is to actually tell you how they are different from a DID, which is Dissociative Identity Disorder. So people who have DID and OSDD1, either 1A or 1B, are systems. Yeah, they experience um, I could multiplicity do this or plurality. If I really got so into the weeds and studied every eye disease that I don't have mm -hmm. and then told you about what I have, I could do If you were like, hey, Mike, uh, what type of blindness do you have? I could do this, but I know... That's not the answer you want to hear. As a human being, I'm just going to tell you, I have macular degeneration. That's that's all you really need. No, no, no. You got to make shit up. You got to say, <laughs> well, you see, what I have are these microorganisms in my head that are fucking with a retina. They're in there nonstop. I have to battle them. What do I have? Do you have 40 minutes? <laughs> yeah. I think you have to make shit up, and then people are interested in what you have to say. Because, honestly, if this person just had, like, I don't know, bladder cancer... I don't think there'd be people tuning in to the explanation of this. Oh, I didn't even think of that. That's probably why it's so complex, is it doesn't exist. <laughs> Dave Owens for five bucks. It looks like a human turtle. Yeah. It's not great. I Honestly, I didn't know what uh, this person was assigned at birth at first, but I think it was. I think this is a female, right? Well, Carl, you're referring <laughs> oh, to the... Yeah. yeah. Let me, let me, let me, let me get this right. I want to get yeah. this right. The phrase they used is the original host is oh, no yes. longer using that body anymore. I have that. Let's play that video real quick because <laughs> yeah. I can't watch any yes. more of OSDD <laughs> and what that means. This is um, apparently who this person was born as no longer exists. She's missing. Very convenient for all the other personalities. Hey, I'm Merlin, and I am the host oh, of an OSDD right. system. Yeah, Merlin is they, he. I don't get the order of the, but okay, let's see what's going on here. What's up? I'm River, I'm our gatekeeper. So let's talk about our former host for a second. First of all, uh, we will never give out her name because that is still the body's legal name. Another important thing to note is that she has been dormant since 2015, and it is very, very likely, although we can never know for certain, um, that she will never come out of dormancy. And if she does, it would be to immediately integrate with somebody else. Oh, no. We the original body is here. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is like watching someone play Dungeons and Dragons by themselves. Because the, they're just, it, they're making up storylines all over the place. And you're just like trying to follow it. You're like, wait, what? Then what happens? What? <laughs> there, there is a, like, if you're a person who's seeking help for this, there would be compassion that I would feel. <laughs> but like, right. when it's just a common thing online that we're supposed to be like, oh, very interesting. Oh, you're, you're nine people. Are you? <laughs> That's fascinating. Tell me about it. <laughs> We also know that she is dormant and not necessarily integrated with somebody else because River actually located her and has put her in a safe place in the headspace where if she does happen to wake up, she cannot hurt herself or anybody else or access the front. This sounds like how, if you ask about uh, David Miscovich's wife in Scientology. <laughs> yeah. They're like, well, she's dormant right now, actually. Yeah, no, she's <laughs> fine. She's fine. She can't hurt anyone where she is. <laughs> Do any of her identities think this is all bullshit? I'd like one of the identities to come out and just be like, by the way, I don't agree with any of the other identities and what they're saying on, on TikTok. Hey, don't turn this off. Guys, I need to be heard. I think she's kind of just doing it for attention. You know, I don't really. <laughs> yeah. Would that be amazing? Hey, I'm, I'm <laughs> Sally. My pronouns are she, her. I uh, just want to let you know that the rest of these personalities in here are fucking nuts. Then I would believe it, actually. I'd be like, well, <laughs> yeah. she's got a diverse group in there. <laughs> that would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Because the funny thing about her and all of her personalities is they seem to all agree with each other yes. and get along very well. They have a lot of the same politics. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Which, you know what? I'm just going to skip ahead. There's a lot here. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we're going to get to all of it, but. I understand. This, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is one that there's a peek inside the mind here. This is a personality named Astra. And Astra is a she, they, he. Oh, yeah. Can I throw this in there also? It's, no, it's, it's important to have background, if you don't mind. 
<laughs> yeah, because please. I followed this girl's journey from like uh, late 2020 to present day. Okay. And so at a time there were 10 personalities. Okay. Um, now I believe Manageable. We're, working with, we're working with at least 16 now. So okay. it's grown. <laughs> yep. But along the way, some of the personalities have combined and joined forces. Oh. So I believe Astra is a mix of five of her former personalities combined into one. <laughs> so in other words, she's getting rid of the old character she doesn't like anymore. She's a twin that ate the other fetus. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's like when they killed off Optimus Prime, but they put him in that. What was the new guy that they became the new? It was like a race car. Am I, am I too old for this car? I don't know. Bumblebee? <laughs> That's the only other one I know. <laughs> God damn you, Mike. God damn you. Astra, and I'm a protector in our OSDD system. So technically, there is never a time where nobody is fronting at all. So in our That's system, good. in but order to front... In plain English, what she means there is... <laughs> there's not a time where my mind is completely vacant. <laughs> Correct. There's not a time where I'm just lying there still and not responsive. Well, except for the fact that later on in this video, there is a time when that happens. <laughs> and she explains how, it ha how that happens. Front, you have to sit in the gaming chair. And our fronting station is like a massive PC gaming setup. Okay. So there's a huge wall of monitors where some see what the eye see. Some have different stats like this is the last time we took a shower. This is the last time we ate what we ate. All right, this is my problem with this. This reminds me of the Matrix theory. Because as soon as VR came about, people would get involved and they go, holy shit, what if our world is actually VR? And then people are like, our brains are like computers. Our brains are nothing like computers. This world is nothing like VR. Th this woman is just like, yeah, being me is like sitting down at a PC game with multiple monitors and you got a mouse and you're trying to figure out how many hit points you have. I was like, no, 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 That's not how life is at all. It's just your experience. And that's why you're trying to equate these things. If a little kid, like, a, you know, if a five-year-old came up to you and said this, like, you know, yeah. I have little people in my mind looking yeah. at computers and working me with knobs, you'd be like, that's very good. Good little imagination you have. Yeah, you're a cute little whippersnapper. Now go draw a picture of it. Leave me alone. Now we're like, hey, 100,000 followers. That's what you get for that. <laughs> um, these are some of the things that we need to make sure get done this week, stuff like that. So somebody always has to be sitting in the chair. However, there are definitely times where the person who's sitting in that chair is not at all paying attention to what's going on outside the body and is instead flipped around backwards facing into the library. I, I hope Chad Zubax will see to this. Next time you want to like rob a liquor store or something, just be like, yeah, well, what happened was the person who was in charge of my brain at that time and flipped around the chair Looking at the hey, library, I didn't pay attention. Take the wheel on this bitch for five minutes, so I gotta take a look. <laughs> yeah. Oh this no, usually no one's at the helm! <laughs> when we're having like a system-wide meeting where everybody needs to be included at the same time. So while whoever's fronting me- So wait a second, there's system-wide meetings with all of these lunatics? Oh yeah, And no one's together. paying attention to the body at that time? No, there's a board meeting, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, it's it's uh, the first Tuesday of the month, around 3 o'clock. We all get together. Be dissociated I'd, lo from I'd love to grab dinner with you. All my personalities get to get, get together and figure out which one's going to meet there, though. Sorry. What's going on in the outer world, they are still very much in control of the body, which is important in case of any kind of emergency. But if no one is there, um, we just look like we're zoning off or dissociating or trying to fall asleep or something like that. Kind of like. Uh, she's just staring off into the distance and she's explaining that like, oh, yeah, no, it's that, cool if I do that. She said there was always someone there, which is. And then she lied. Yeah. And your and story's then straight. I know. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. All right. It gets crazier because it's not just I assume that she's Caucasian. I don't know. Yeah. But it's not just Caucasians that are personalities. No, There's a Mexican mo I mean, in there. Other Hi, other my name is Shadow. <laughs> yeah. So this is Shadow. Shadow is from from Mexico. My name is Shadow, and I am one of the newest members of the solar system. 
my pronouns are they, she, and he in that order, and you can use any of them interchangeably. What do you mean in that order? What does that mean, Mike? <laughs> they, That's she, and he to... in that order. It's how you have to say it, I think. You say all three, and then she will uh, deem you worthy to speak to. Okay. I'm 19, uh, and I've been around for almost three weeks at this point. Well, how was that possible? <laughs> You're three weeks then. <laughs> hey, I am loving it. I am a three week old and it's great to be here. I'm originally from Mexico and in the headspace I appear Latinx. And there's no Spanish in this brain. And so when I'm fronting, I can't speak Spanish at all. And that's really fronting weird. Fronting is the perfect word for that. Yes. <laughs> First off, there's not a Mexican in, in Mexico that refers to themselves as Latinx. <laughs> or, right. or Latinx. Yeah, it's or a thing fuck. we made up. <laughs> yeah, that's that's actually, I, I think they kind of find it offensive, to be honest with you. And this idea, she's like, well, I grew up in Mexico, but I don't speak Spanish. Well, you, your the whole story just got fucked just now. I will say, I kind of like, I'm sure at the, ve the very early stages of this DID stuff, they were like, we got to find a workaround. Like, if one of us yeah. is Spanish, we got to think of a reason why we don't speak Spanish. And now they're just like, listen, I'm from Spain. I don't speak any of that horse shit language they do, though. So uh, I'm just an English gal. Yeah, she's almost the opposite of Alec Baldwin's wife. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Mexico and I can't speak Spanish. <laughs> I just sound like some broad from really Boston. It's just weird having memories growing up in Mexico and now I can speak more French than I can my own native language. I front more often than... It's almost like I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, there's more nonsense in this one. Hold on, let me play a little bit more. Some of our other new members, and we think that's because I'm going to be a new co-host. But there's still a lot that I have to learn. I came into the system already knowing a lot about our basic day-to-day -day routine, and so that's what I've been helping out with. So, What are the chances that this personality would know all about the the people in this person's body wow <laughs> i good, love the good phrase co-host like do you think in her mind there's chatter like yeah like uh will opie and jim work the same as opie <laughs> and anthony you know that's You're right sort of thing. like how are these two gonna be at co-hosting together I, I hope astra and shadow have a good uh rapport <laughs> we'll see <laughs> hope their chemistry is on point <laughs> so far he hasn't fronted yet but shade is my twin brother all six of us new people grew up together in Mexico, and so we're all pretty close to each other. She brought a whole Mexican hey, family in. <laughs> yeah, right. Wait, how did you get across the border? And she's I, every you one got a, of them. You got some splitted <laughs> to do over here. Asexual and a lesbian. And okay, that's where that's where I have to Jesus. back hey. things up. This this annoyed me right here. I because now I'm like I don't think you understand what you're saying. I'm like not girls, the one who's confused. I'm not gonna fuck them. I'm asexual and a lesbian, and this is what I look like. No, it's not what you look like. How can you be asexual and a lesbian? How does that work? Just holds a picture of Jennifer Lopez. None of it's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have one more video that I have to play. Yes, please. I mean, there's more that you sent me, obviously. Uh, there's and a we, bunch more, but yes, I yeah. think what you're about to play is the one where I was like, "All right, lady, now I now I love you. Now I'm on board." Oh, I don't know if that's the one I'm playing or not, because we found out that she has all these different personalities and some are Mexican and some aren't. And it's like, okay, well, maybe she's not getting enough attention. How could she be even crazier than that? Cameron and Avery are human when controlling the body and birds when they are in our headspace. I cannot explain this any more simply. <laughs> so now there's also birds. So what I loved about this, there's bird a, brains. She, She's made a few videos as Cameron, and in the first one, she's like, "Hey, I'm a camera. I'm I'm Cameron, and uh, I'm a bird." And then in the next one, she's like, uh, "To all the people asking about this, like, I guess they're not going to stop asking." So, no, I cannot fly. I'm a human avian hybrid. What <laughs> do you get about that? Yeah, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Uh, actually, no, the one I thought you were going to play is the one I sent right after that. All right. And so I, I wrote down in my notes here. I'm like, okay, so you're multiple people. You're, you're multiple birds. What next? You're going to be a space alien? Well, 
Hello, my name is Knox, and I am a member of an OSDD system. And I am 1,206 years old. <laughs> Granted, that is in Mercury years, because that is where I'm from. System members can be any age. Our Oberon is even ageless. He is eternal. Our age is part of our identity. And our identity is not just what makes us unique, but it is part of what helps us help the system the best. We are who we are as individuals because that is what we needed to survive. Thank you so much for your question, and you are welcome to ask more. All right. Oh, I have a question. You know Tommy from MSCS? <laughs> is he from Mercury, too? <laughs> you ever run into him? <laughs> yeah. You know, the other yes. space aliens? 350,000 of us watch him every week. <laughs> Holy shit. So apparently this person needs so much attention. They they started with the gender thing. Like, ah, everyone's doing that. Okay. Well, I got tons of personalities. All right. Well, you know, people are doing that too. Well, some of them are birds. All right. That's, that's pretty cool. We're right, getting lady, somewhere. You're pushing it, but we're yeah. on board. Yeah. I mean, all right. We'll, we'll leave all women. And then, and also I'm a space alien. Like, okay. <laughs> now it's getting a little silly. You know, I, I don't know how the TikTok algorithm works. I know, like, you could post one video, it gets a million views. The next one gets 3,000 or something. Yeah. But there should be something worked out in the algorithm where the sentence that triggers something is, granted, those are in Mercury years. <laughs> and that's when your account gets shut down. Yeah. That's when they're like, oh, you don't, you shouldn't be doing this in public. Yeah, I bet you can't even speak Mercurian, can you? Yes, you don't even know the language of, of Mercury, <laughs> you of liar. Course. As you probably guessed, that was on the planet Mercury. I'm not some crazy person who thinks you could be 1,200 on Earth. Uh, fuck it. You know what? I let's let's just get them all. One more video. <laughs> all right. We're going way over. I didn't want to have to do this, but since we're having so much fun with this lunatic. Okay, so apparently a lot of you need to hear this. You are allowed to make fun and make jokes about your own illnesses, disorders, issues, conditions, whatever. Oh, well, thank you for granting me yes. the ability to make fun of uh, being club-footed. I appreciate that. Same here. Yeah, good. If you do not have that illness, condition, disorder, whatever, you are not allowed to joke about it. Ah, oh, fuck. To who? <laughs> yeah, well, whoops. Ah, shit. <laughs> yeah, well, we're in trouble now because I don't even have one person and it's a bird, let alone multiple personalities yeah, that are birds. Earlier? Yeah, shit. Well, now, I okay. know I've been taking a razzing from all the 1,200-year-olds, and that's fine. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm allowed to joke about being a system because I'm a system. Singlets are not allowed to make jokes about systems, okay? And before y'all comment, I'll say it louder for the people in the back. Systems are allowed to joke about being systems. Singlets are not. I should, Thank since that you. probably sounds like gibberish, I should explain. Yeah. A system is one person who thinks they're 75 people. They're referred to as a system rather than a human being, apparently. Sure, yeah. And a singlet is us, you know, normies. Well, speak for yourself, sir. I'm sorry. You only have one personality? Okay. I mean, that's cool too, man. There's On this program, we have me, we have Carl, and we have a 17-year-old girl that has Tourette's that Carl pretends to be <laughs> Penis! Penis! <laughs> ass crack! <laughs> yeah, what you're talking about is she. she's a did system. Disassociative identity disorder right. is, is what we're talking about here. And um, I just want to grab her parents by their throats. <laughs> There's another say, video. What, are you, what are you doing? There was a Why video I didn't send where she's like, you know, it's the holidays, and I'll be honest, things aren't great with my family right now. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot no of people shit. don't understand my the, the system. Yeah, can you just let us know who's coming to dinner tonight so that we can prepare and know the fucking pronouns, please? Well, that's the crazy thing. <laughs> In one video, she was talking about work, and she's oh, like, no. "Well, River starts the day at six a.m." And mm. she works for about four hours, and then Merlin takes over. And all I could think of was imagine being one of her coworkers, and they're like, hey, River, could you grab this for me? And she's like, well, River hasn't been here for hours. Yeah. You're like, or whichever one you are, could you please imagine, get this done? <laughs> imagine she was doing freelance work, and you have to fucking write out all the 1099s. Like, all right, 
<laughs> so wait, how many hours did River do? And how many did Merlin? And God damn I'm so it. sorry, you gave me Knox's tax forms. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I, I shouldn't even be seeing them. <laughs> this is private information. Uh, Gary Crouch for two dollars. I've seen this movie. It's Sybil. <laughs> Dude, these fucking people are insane. All right. It's wild. Yeah. It is it is wild, but uh that's part of the fun of social media is that everyone gets a voice. And if you're this person, you have like 20 voices. <laughs> so, good on you. You've you've gained the system, so to speak. Mike blindmike.net is where people can go be. and find links to everything including the RSS feed for this yes. show who are these socials. I am no longer putting this show out on who are these podcasts. It's right. you got to go find it wherever you get podcasts. Now it's going to be on the, who are these socials feed? You can find it anywhere you get podcasts. Yeah. Throw some five-star reviews on there and make ours nicer than the ones on WATP. So it looks like this is a better show. You know? Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Compliment the host if you want to. Yeah. That'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. Um, and if you, want, if you want to lie about our looks, that's cool too. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny if we get everyone to just write like a couple of really hot guys hosting a show about social media? <laughs> a couple of studs. I yeah. heard they have massive cocks. They were talking yeah. about it on the last episode. <laughs> Grunk lookalikes doing a, a hilarious <laughs> podcast. Yeah, do you, that. It, actually, that is what you should do. Do over the top complimentary five star yes. reviews. <laughs> I want to hear about how my teeth are straight and I have a great chin. <laughs> Mike Geary could spot a dime from a mile away. <laughs> <laughs> they call him old eagle eye uh also uh, should you mention that uh this is right before DabbleCon? is there are there any tickets left or no shockingly yes there are tickets available watplive.com is where you can get tickets if you are anywhere in driving distance to rochester new york uh friday and saturday february 3rd and 4th we have a bunch of events going on the reason why i say shockingly there are tickets available is I love Anthony. He's been great all week. He's mm -hmm. been talking up DabbleCon. He's been plugging the hell out of it. But for some reason, he thinks the show's sold out. So he keeps going. <laughs> he keeps going. Yeah, it's sold out. It's great. It's going to be an amazing show. I'm like, no, don't say that. There's still tickets available. <laughs> People can still buy tickets. Run it out now. Because it's like Carl was telling me a lot of the shit they have planned. It does sound like a lot of fun. I wish I, uh, you know, wish I was invited. But oh, it, so. it's going to be killer. Mike. What do you mean? Who's your invite? I, I plug it all the time. Everyone's Cardiff invited. Electric invite. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. All right. Good. Let's go. Get down here. No, it's it's going to be a lot of fun. And I was over there today with Vinny and Eso and mapping out all of the shows. We have a three camera shoot on everything, so there's going to be video from everything. Oh, nice. I, I'm I'm very excited about the people predicting this. This is going to be a failure and a debacle because it's going to be just the opposite. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, and well, the beauty of your show is it makes a full show that you can talk about the debacle. So you really win either way, you know. Oh, I am well aware of that, <laughs> Mike. In New York City, I did a live show. And my computer shit the bed. I would say I heard it, but nobody did. Nobody did. My <laughs> computer shit the bed. And I am sitting up there next to Anthony going, humana, 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 now what? <laughs> and uh, that's been a lot of fun ever since. I mean, it wasn't fun at the time, but we've had fun talking about it ever since. So, I can yes. only imagine in that moment how many times Anthony would kind of, I mean, I'm sorry, Carl would say like to himself. But so Anthony could hear it, like, ah, this never happens. It's crazy. You know? <laughs> yeah, I know. First time this has ever happened to me. I'm usually so buttoned up over here. Can't believe it. No, I think I think at one point, as I was rebooting my, rebooting my computer for the fifth time, Anthony goes, do I got to keep tap dancing over here? What's going on? I'm like, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's only so much you can expect of a uh, co-host who shows up. Well, go do that, folks. Make sure you go to DabbleCon and, yeah, blindmike.net. Um, the breakup, speaking of Anthony, by the way, maybe help out your old pal Mike. Tell Anthony, hey, there's a big episode about you on Why You Left. Yeah. We did uh, the breakup of Opie and Anthony. People seem to be enjoying it. And so uh, on Patreon this month, I think at some point we will do the breakup of Opie and Jim as well because people have requested it. Excellent. I have not heard that yet. I'm trying to keep up with all your content, Mike. You're putting out too much. I, I can't keep we're, up. With it. I've always said we're a quantity over quality operation. <laughs> yes, very smart. Yep. Just keep churning it out and see what happens. 
Exactly. Uh, if you uh, if you like making fun of podcasts, who are these podcasts is a show to check out wherever you get your podcasts. Who are these dot com is where I post all the audio from this show as well as who are these podcasts. And of course, we do have a Patreon Patreon dot com slash who are these podcasts. We just put out a brand new episode, another installment of Centering John's autobiography. Easy for you to say. And we had Mike Morris from Uncle Rico come over uh, with myself and producer Chris and goddamn. That book is so fascinating to me. What Suttering John wrote in that book, the lies that he has, he explains what happened when he was on the Artie Lang show. And I've yeah. listened to that show multiple times, so he's just lying. It's just great. <laughs> it's just so How fun to pick it all apart. How have left? I have about two hours. I, I don't even know what the chapters are or anything. He's so bad at organizing oh. his book. We have about two hours to go in the audio book, so okay. we're not going to get done anytime soon because, dude, every time I sit down to clip, I pull about 40 clips and um, 15 minutes into yeah. my, I'm like, all right, well, that's it. That's what I did with that solar girl. I was just, I was like, I'm sending yeah. Carl too many. I, I have to stop. It's a lot. Yeah, I know. You sent me the video of her at work and her jeans got torn <laughs> up and yeah. she didn't know what happened because, yeah. yeah, someone else did it. It's one of her other personalities. <laughs> Fucking insane. Anyway. Mike, this has been a lot of fun. I always enjoy uh, doing Who Are These Socials. We can't go two hours again, though. I'm too busy this week for this. All right, let's get the hell out of here. It's too much. uh... Let's get the fuck out of here. Have fun at DabbleCon, everybody. See you never. Who are these socials? That's what this audience wants to hear. Like, whoa! Who are these socials? I'm the one who should apologize. Folks, what you are about to see is real. With Carl. Okay, we got it. And blind Mike. Who could have thought of that? W.